All right. Hey, hey, hey. What's up uh, for the slight delay, but welcome to Girl Chat Sports with Mo and Mel. We are here, and um, it's another exciting week in sports and exciting stuff for us, too. So we got to shout out to Tarek Brown for uh, the amazing time we had last night, courtesy of him. We had a little Galentine's. A windy valentine's oh, oh windy and it's a windy wednesday like it's windy outside it tonight it's, it's windy west wednesday. coast wednesday hey if you're tuning in now please share this uh for free with all your friends have them enjoying it all the fun that you have with us also to note i just drank a cup of coffee at 4 30 because i was getting tired because of our late night last night and my work day today so in case i start going off my caffeine high just bear with me because I don't usually drink coffee this late in the afternoon. <laughs> so you never got any rest? I, I mean, mean, I got I got home like one. I probably got Tilly and the dogs all settled by like 132. But then, you know, I, I work at seven. So. Uh oh, OK. <laughs> You're like, basically. And that's how it saying. goes. And that's how it goes. And that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today's episode, we're going to go over the Super Bowl, of course, the Rihanna halftime show. We know we, you guys have your own opinions. You want to share ours. Talk about some Super Bowl commercials that we liked. I did find the one that I posted on Facebook, if you follow me on Facebook, because there was a dog commercial that like literally brought me to tears. I found that. We're going to play that. Um, we'll talk about uh, a couple Hugador, so maybe a Hugadoras team that's been in trouble as of the last uh, few days. We'll get into some Vegas sports, a lot of stuff happening in Vegas sports. And then, of course, we'll talk a little NBA. We'll talk about the All-Star Weekend that's coming this weekend in Salt Lake City. And Major League Baseball spring training is back. The season is getting started. We'll talk a little bit about that. Finally! Yes! And, uh, of course, you know I got my sneaker drops, so we'll discuss some sneaker drops. But first, we got to get started with a little Rihanna I talk about this. I did, I'm going to show a little video that I took from um, me and Natalie got to enjoy the game at a watch party at Allegiant Stadium. And so I'm going to show a little video from that because there's some background noise. So I'm hoping YouTube doesn't pick up on the Rihanna song and we get flagged. Um, but here's a little, this is the best, I mean, it was the best part because you got to see my favorite part of the show, which was the stages that were floating in the air, which I thought was amazing. So here's a little bit of that. Hey, listen, let's get into it. Let, let's talk about Rihanna's show. Let's talk about her show. First of all, your video it, looked like you were like literally there. The way you were able to zoom in and stuff and the way how it's like at Allegiant, it's like you were literally in. Because uh, we had like surround sound, like we were there watching it, but we weren't watching but it. But I mean, you know it's what like I mean? you could literally could have been at the same <laughs> yeah. ball, filming the same kind of vantage point of it. So that even made it right. even, you know, even more fire than yeah. watching as opposed yes, to yes yes so well rihanna first of all you get 13 minutes in the super bowl for halftime rihanna performed 12 songs you see them all there in the center lane 12 songs 12 bangers 12 hits that maybe i'm sure most of us knew if not all of us knew and the fact that she's able to have 12 songs in one performance that right there hands down was good enough for me but then there's yeah, the like, outfit I thought it was fine. There's, the, there's the outfit then there's the pregnancy so what would how about you what, what do you got what's your take on the rihanna halftime i mean i thought it was fire i mean who gets a chance to see rihanna and rihanna i should say yes in concert? Rihanna. like mm -hmm. who, who gets that opportunity and the fact she didn't do full songs but she did the best choruses of each one for us yeah. to know with little snippets and uh, the stage presence and everything was great. And those that don't get it, ain't gonna get it, never had it. So, you know, that's just what it is. 
You know, and I, there were some people that were talking about the lip syncing and what, but I'm sorry, I, I'm pretty That's sure amazing. like she lip syncs are all through her shows. When she's dancing Rhythm Nation, you think Janet Jackson's out there Hello. singing and dancing at the same time without a lip sync? Come on. <laughs> You have like I said, people who don't get it ain't gonna get it and never had it. So there we we move on. You know what I mean? Rihanna right. is the level. She's not Beyonce. Beyonce is who she is. Rihanna is her own person. We need to stop doing the comparisons. Shout out to her to pay an homage to Andre Leon Talley for her red ensemble that was worn by Alaya and a few other featured designers. Low with the breastplate, like the fashion was on par, the dancing was on par every single banger i knew and, and so just a form of fan right. girl Jennifer. fenty the searches for fenty went up 833 percent when she yeah, took the time yes a product plug when she tapped batted her face with a fenty product and, and that's doesn't know about what fenty. it's about Hello. Is a billionaire. So, so my favorite she- skincare lotion is from fenty and i'm addicted to it you know what i mean like it's just I think the biggest shocker of the show was the fact that we were all in conversation. Like, is she Prego? Is she having a baby again? Exactly. Have that baby? But that baby was born in May. So that baby's coming up on a year. So it does make sense that she would be pregnant again. ASAP was ASAP, ASAP with Rocky. it. I've seen him a lot. <laughs> His support is unreal. Just like she supports yes. him. Red Life is yes. beautiful. We got to see ASAP on stage. And Rihanna was there. Rihanna was there. She was there supporting her man at that show in Las Vegas. Uh, and vice versa. Like the love is there, and it just—it was just amazing to see. Like who can levitate? If you're pregnant and can levitate on some a beam like that, then everybody can get up and go to work the next day. Man, listen. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like for real. Like there should be no excuses. <laughs> there, there, there isn't any. There isn't any you have or should have. It's just that's really what it is. She, she was great. Like it was a dope show. I, I love Rihanna, so I'm a fan. Please don't stop the music. I was hoping that she'd get into that, but she didn't. Um, she's got a lot of cuts. You know, same old mistakes where she, you know, has that banger off of Tame Impala. Like I'm a fan, so. I enjoyed every minute of it. And sometimes it's great when, to your point, we talked about this last night, where you don't have to be accompanied by other artists to have no. bangers. You're Rihanna. Why would you need to have the accompaniment? Prince didn't. You well, know, and I think, you know, percent. like last Super Bowl was amazing. Like they had all these great performers that we saw in LA. The only thing is that being with so many different people in one show in 13 minutes alone, you didn't get to get much of each one of them. So you kind of felt short. You know what I mean? Now you're I being mean, like, I, it- I will say it was a good Super Bowl last night. I won't say it was amazing. I think what was, uh, uh, was admirable is the fact that they featured West coast artists, but again, yeah. you got snippets and it jumped around too much to get identity on each artist. Like, and I just like the viewpoints Mariana on this one focus and have one content, her catalog, the best of her bangers, and to see her actually perform when she hasn't put out a record in I don't know how long. And to get views like this. Like, I don't, I haven't seen just the stage production in a Super Bowl as it's been in this one. I think that was just half of the mesmerizing effect for myself in seeing that. This I mean, Katy Perry came out on a mechanical line. I mean, it don't get no deeper than that. But to see this, it I'm was not a great. Katy Perry I mean, fan, set design so, was you know. simplistic, but but also about powerful. A lot of good features to it. The dancers made it even pop even more with her guy Papa Red. Like it was just it was this was good. It was just yeah. great. Yeah. What's but up, Natalie? Was, she said Re was amazing. It was perfect. Top five. Was, I feel like it was what we needed. Now the question is, who do we get in Vegas? Because the Super Bowl is going to be in Vegas next year. That's another question. My prediction would probably be Taylor Swift with the Killers, Imagine Dragons, and some other people. But it's got to be huge because it's Vegas. Right. And Heather, you're right. All white being pregnant. Like, listen, some people can't even get out of bed when they're pregnant, let alone do a whole half. Not to mention all the preparation it took for the Super Bowl for the Super Bowl halftime show. Like, you are having to, you know, work on the routine, the layout. I mean, most of her dancers were doing this stuff. There were some great memes, of course, too, like, you know, the sperm one coming after the egg and <laughs> how your how your dog follows you when you got food in your hand. And, you know, there were some great memes out there that, you know, but of course, it's we're in a social media world. The memes, the Twitter patrols are out there in full effect. Uh, what's up, Goose? Let, shout out to Let the Ball Bounce. Uh, yeah, I love it. What's up, Jonathan? Shout out to I Sports for You. Question. We Who appreciate you guys tuning in. Who do we get That's the Vegas? question. You know? That's the question. I, that Taylor is... Swift 
somebody in the killers and imagine dragons and we got else. less than a year and super bowl yeah. 58 is here at allegiance stadium so all of you guys need to start booking your trips now if you're heading to vegas hopefully uh the weather will be a little bit warmer next year than it is this way <laughs> this year in February. we're already i think we've been at a constant 10 degrees below our usual average for the year so it would be nice if it was in the 60s next year for the super bowl i, I would not uh be upset with that one so um great we really enjoyed the rihanna show now talk about commercials because i know when it comes to super bowl depending on if you're more about commercials and more about the game and we're at halftime you gotta pick your choices as to when your bathroom breaks are and for me, I couldn't get it right. Like I would try to go maybe during the game when it didn't seem to be needed, you know, when I had time, but I think I missed a few commercials. There were some out there that I didn't get a chance to see. I know this one was a favorite by most everybody, especially the Twitter kingdom, uh, the Tubi commercial. Welcome back to Super Bowl 57 so far, Greg, the game going like you expected. Yeah, and so far these teams, they've really <laughs> it was everybody got totally uh flustered that they somebody had their remote control and was messing up the um super bowl viewing for their family at home so that was interesting we saw ben affleck and j-lo in a dunkin donuts commercial um the John Travolta with the T-Mobile one. He was doing like the Grease inspired musical number. And I love Grease. So I really enjoyed that one. Do you have any that were your, some of your favorites, Mo? Um, no, not really. Nothing that, yeah. And then they had, they brought back, they brought back Walter and Jesse from Breaking Bad for the pop corners. That was good. Um, the Tubi one tripped everybody out, I think, the most. You know? <laughs> yeah. Serena was in a couple of them. I think she did one for Remy Martin. I forgot what the other one was. Um, Pepsi had a couple with the great acting or great taste commercials. Those were eh, interesting, I guess, to say the least. But I will say this dog one, it's for Farmer's Dog. I had to put a little extra music on it because, it, you know, they use some other background music that might have been flagged. But this one right here almost brought me to tears during a Super Bowl party watch party. So here it goes. So this one basically was the I'll take care of you commercial, basically showing a woman from a, as a child having a lab. It looks like a chocolate lab or something and, you know, getting it all the way into where, you know, it's, t it's been with her through most of her life. And, you know, you can see the dogs aging and well, you know, me and my Shug, Shug's an aging guy. So it really touched me, but that was probably by far one of my favorites. Um, there was a lot, I'm sure we'll still be seeing more of them on, uh, on the, and the TV ways and the commercials because they're just awesome. But yeah, also, guess whose birthday it is Friday? The goat, my goat, <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael, for his 60th birthday on Friday, is making a $10 million donation to the Make a Wish Foundation. It's the largest donation that's been received from an individual to the organization in its 43-year history. Michael said he can't think of a better birthday gift than seeing others join him in supporting Make-A-Wish so that every child can experience the magic of having their wishes come true. 
Uh, apparently, Michael Jordan is still remains one of the most requested celebrities, uh, wish granters, and he's granted several hundred wishes to children all over the world. Shout out to Mike. Mo's in these comments. She's trying to get back to people. No, I mean, you're saying enough. I mean, I have, I have nothing to co-sign on. That, so. <laughs> I read the article. I saw that, too. My Lakers are playing right now against the Pelicans. LeBron is back tonight. So, kind yeah, of like, after he's taken uh, a little hiatus from breaking a scoring record. <laughs> yeah, all of that. So now he's back in action. And, you know, there's no Zion for the Pelicans because he's always staying hurt consistently. I tell you, yeah. you know, this guy is like one of the biggest, I'm not going to say bust, but he's another Mr. Glass. Didn't AD come from the Pelicans and got hurt all the time? <laughs> so now it's like the curse of. The multiples. Maybe the Pelicans um, need to re-image their organization. I mean, or pick. Honestly, I feel like Zion Williamson needs to be on the gridiron. Like, if you're gonna get hurt for that, take some tackles. Do that. But you <laughs> they need to have an NBA gridiron. Is what they need to and have. Sitting That'd in fancy great. street clothes is not helping your team whatsoever. It's 38-25 yeah. at the end of the first, and the Lakers are up. I'll take it. I'm not gonna complain. I'm just saying. Okay. Not well, crazy. yeah, Zion's gonna be out for multiple weeks. They said that after he re-injured his hamstring on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, so. yeah. It's cold world. You know, it's a cold, cold world. world. He gained it's all that weight, put it down on injury, he lost his little weight, jumps up and does these big audacious dunks and still can get hurt. <laughs> I don't know. He's feeling good. I don't know. What, a, what are you, how are you feeling about this new Lakers rebuild that they've done? Is it enough? I mean, that's if and when LeBron plays, you've got D'Angelo back, Jared Vanderbilt, like Beasley, Mo Bamba. Uh, was Dennis Schroeder part of one of those <laughs> trades or was he already part. there? Huh? I'm not excited about the Mobamba part, but I mean, they're no. young. I mean, it's a young and up and coming team. We're 13 right now. We might qualify for a play in contention at this point, possibly, but we're still losing games. I mean, it's not, it's the future, I guess. It's good to see deloading back. Um, young, fresh legs and good shooters is, is great to see. Uh, Ryu is actually doing his little thing and, you know, um, without a LeBron element in it, like our points being up tonight with him in it kind of helps, I think, motivate these guys. But I don't know what that season outcome is going to look like. I'm not saying, oh, the Lakers are going to definitely go in the playoffs. No, we'll, we'll probably make it to a play-in contention with this new squad. In. Well, but, I'm hoping my Bulls make a play in. They're now one and a half games out of tenth place behind well, the Wizards. Um yeah, you guys got issues too. And it's just it's, it's it crazy. is. It's and all, crazy. All the teams are issues right now. It's just kind of crazy. I know. I know. Yeah. But what did you think of um your Anthony Davis's excuse as to what his body language was from the uh when I think we all saw that when um AD was kind of sitting on the bench when uh, LeBron hit his scoring the scoring record shot right. and everybody thought he was just kind of hating it but he says he was just um, he was just, you know, he, that he was just mad or it was related to the team's struggles. I'm sorry. This was like the third quarter and you guys weren't down by like 20 points. You guys, I think they, they were within like four or six or something. Like, I just don't, your performance was poor. I mean, you maybe. want my opinion or you want to give your yeah. opinion? No, I okay, want your so opinion, opinion too. Is this. this is my opinion on it all. I do believe what he said, because again, I, I pointed out the fact that they should not have lost in a night where he broke a record like that. And I thought that they weren't playing up to what they should have. And not to mention, Darvin Ham had got into it with one of the players, two on the bench, had called them to the carpet, was going in on them. AD was a little frustrated about that, but also frustrated that, yeah, why didn't we win this game off of an outcome on that? So, yeah, I believe that it wasn't a hate thing. I thought it was a hate thing, the way his body language and the narrative that everyone, the talking heads and media like to put out there. But I do believe that he probably was frustrated because how you going to lose on a night where LeBron is passing up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record? And to your point, he was only down, they were only down like four or five points. Like it was a game that was achievable and attainable to meet. And it just didn't happen. And a lot of that sometimes has to do with coaching. Arvin Ham, to me, is not the best coach. He makes poor coaching choices, especially in the second half and sometimes late in the fourth. So I can see him being mad. I don't think that's a lie. I don't think that's a lie at all. I mean, I feel like he, 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 I think it, it came out a little, I think he had time to think of a really good excuse. <laughs> you know, I mean, here's the deal. But it wasn't like, here's the deal. 
LeBron scores this, hits the scoring record, and then basically sits out for the remainder of the fourth. So even if they had been up and doing well or doing mediocre up until then, then LeBron sits out and then the rest of the team has. So the, the game was no record. See if the scoring record had happened like the end of the fourth, right before the end of the game. And yeah, you should have won, but you had a whole quarter. To try and well, get that's what I'm saying. They win. did not play up. That's the whole point I'm but trying so, to make. But this happened play. before. But I'm saying him sitting and being upset. That happened before even the end of the game. This wasn't the end of the game when he was caught sitting down. Well, it we were during, down. We were down. Yeah, by like and, four and, or six and, points. But that's, that was that's the capable. Time when he hit his scoring record when Darvin Ham and what you call it were getting into it. So that happened right then and there as well before that scoring record hit. So, like I said, it could have yeah. been that. I mean, I don't think I don't think, think eighty's a hater to the to the degree that we're <laughs> we're painting this narrative of. I do think he's street clothes. I don't think he's a hater. I think he really <laughs> values and respects LeBron because LeBron brought him there. I mean, I mean, I, I get it. Yeah, like that. I get it. I get it. It wouldn't make any sense it. for him to be like that. And that's to mention they did not play up. They did not play. Up. We were down when he even hit that score record. We weren't up at the end of the yeah. third. We were down. And we still didn't keep that momentum going where we could be back up. That was crazy. No, not. No, yeah. So it is no. frustrating. And then you hear Darvin Ham as a coach going off. Well, hell, it's your coaching. Your coaching has a lot to do with that too, sir. So I, I get a lot. it. A lot to I do with I get it. But no one asked AD either why he was upset until after. I mean, but you could have just the... stood up and Ben had a pouty face or something. Like Pat Bev still had like a weird face but because they were down. I think but I don't that know. upset, you just don't want to do nothing. You know, I can't, I can't, I, I can't say what people in their emotions should do. I get it. Or what they're supposed to do. But because <laughs> I, I can't speak for a grown man. I know man. what I would do, but that's, you know, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I, I can't speak so. for a grown man. He's going to do what he do. You know, there's <sighs> great things it's that even was grown. Topic, but that was the moment. So, you know. <laughs> All right. So this weekend is All Star Weekend in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, this is gonna be the first year where they draft the teams right before the game. Uh -oh. So as you can see here, you got Team Giannis, Team LeBron. They will be drafting right before the game. So we, you know, usually it's about three or four days ahead of time, but not to this time. So players won't know what team they're going to until the live draft before the actual All Star game. Keep a lookout for that. You also now know who were in the contest. You got the slam dunk contest. The skills challenge, the three-point contest, the only if right now, I believe is Anthony Simmons. I think he got hurt um, either yesterday or day before. So he's questionable for the three-point contest. Of course, you got a team, and it, I can't, I keep, I mess up Giannis' name every time. A and it's a Kupu, and it's a Kopo, whatever. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I, know, I, I can't. I just, I just stop with that. So you got the brothers going against the Jazz, who are the host city, and you got them going also against the rookies. So that'll be uh, – I think the rookies got a good shot at this one, to be honest. They got some They got some fire on that squad. So, I mean, you know, we're still – Very interesting to see everybody come down to Utah. This is going to be the most amazing. <laughs> I wish I could be just in there, the Let's atmosphere. just say there's probably going to be a lot of Hugadores Locos after this weekend in Utah. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I If it is, it's going to be very shocking. But I also think it's going to be very interesting to see a whole mob of folks that normally don't look like the folks in Utah in a city Absolutely. like that to turn up. That's well, not to mention, it's also on a Sunday. And, you know, the Mormons are pretty large in Salt Lake. And Sunday is a day that you don't do nothing. Bars aren't usually open. You can't drink after a certain time. Right. I don't know if it's changed, but when I have family that live there, I know when I used to go visit, you could only, this was maybe like 15, 20 years ago, but you could only have like one item of alcohol per person at your table. So you couldn't sit there with a shot and a drink or have multiple beers. So I'm just well, curious just as to what. more recent than you were last there, and that's uh -huh. not case because we went out on a Sunday okay. we were able to drink you know the only thing well, is no, the you could drink alcohol. but they don't they don't stay open and the amount and the alcohol percentage is a lot lower than other places well too. the alcohol percentage is lower for buying the alcohol percentage is the same as is as, as here for serving the alcohol percentage okay. is lower it just depends you have to request it so when we were gotcha. salt lake city at the clubs when we were at concerts and they were all on a sunday 
it was different. And I think it's just because it's integrated with a lot of different college kids, you know, with BYU and all of that kind of stuff. Some of that stuff has gone a little bit out the window. But they picked this city. So the city is going to have to be accommodating. It can't be about their They got to roll with it. They got to roll, roll, roll with what the it. tourism is going to bring. And honestly, it's going to be very interesting just to see how that all goes down. Yeah. Uh, it will be interesting to see. That's for sure. I mean, I just want to be a blade of grass or a snow flurry just to see all that, just to see what it would Some, be. Yeah. Hopefully we get some good lives. People are sharing what their experiences are while they're there and, and we get to a chance to check it out. Um, speaking of Hugadors, there is, you know, I don't know if it's a Hugadors as a person or players or the team, but I'm sure all of us have heard right now that the New Mexico state fired their head coach for the men's basketball team after Friday, um, a report came, was filed with the campus police that one of the players, um, reported that three of his teammates had been, um, hazing and sexually assaulted him which is just ridiculous. I don't even know why another teammate would want to do that to you. Uh, but that's just terrible. They're doing some investigation. New Mexico doesn't even know if they're going to be keeping the rest of the coaching staff until they do a further investigation. Of course, this is also after the shooting that took place at New Mexico state a few months back. Um, yeah, the New York, New Mexico has also suspended the rest of their season for the 2023 uh, basketball season. So they're done for the year. And there's been no criminal charges right now. And the person who filed the report uh, didn't ask for charges to be to be made. But we'll see if the district attorney feels different after further investigation. I just think that's. They're losing, you know, recruits now because there was a recruit that had basically taken back, you know, signing with them because of these allegations. Like, why would you want to go play there with people that are doing this to their to their peers? It's just. It's too much. Right. I can't handle it. <sighs> yeah. Um, how about some Vegas sports? So we already know the Super Bowl is coming here. That's going to be entertaining yeah. um, for our Vegas Gold Knights. After all star break, we won three straight. Unfortunately, our goalie, Logan Thompson, got injured last week over the weekend. He had a lower body injury I mean, week to week, but we did get to call up uh, the Silver Knights goalie, Laurent Brousseau, I believe it is. Um, he was also one of the backups for VGK last season. So, hey, listen, 3-0 after the All-Star break. I will take it. They're still in first pace in the Pacific. They're like one point over the Kings. Two points over the Kraken. We've got a lot of um, interdivision games coming up in the next couple months. So we'll see if the guys can hold on for uh, towards a playoff push and whatnot. So another one, the Vegas Vipers. They play their first game this Saturday in Arlington against the Arlington Renegades. But remember when I announced that the Vipers were playing at Cashman? I was curious to see how the field would look and so this is what we're seeing now you see that the field will be going lengthwise if you've been to lights games before it'll be going lengthwise where like usually the bleachers are um where the uh fans could sit in those bleachers that were along the what is that then the south side of the stadium so i believe tickets are still on sale they have I don't know if there's individual tickets. There seem to be season tickets still available, but the first home game for the Vipers is going to be on the 20 next Saturday, the 25th. I think it is. Anyways, That's next Saturday, the team. defenders four o'clock. What? I just still can't believe we have an XFL, XFL team here. It's going to be crazy. And what's crazy too, that everybody should know, especially if you're a lights fan, the city council did approve for Cashman field to host the Vipers for two years. So oh. we all know that the lights will not be playing here at home until May until Cinco de Mayo. Wow. So this could also be the case for next season too. Wow. It's going hmm. to be interesting. Very, yeah. very interesting. Um, Shout out to the UNLV running rebel, Lady Rebels. The ladies are 12 and 0. They are going up against San Jose State tomorrow at Cox Pavilion at 6 30. They will, if they can beat San Jose State, they will have clinched the Mountain West Division for the season. Wow. They win it twice in a row. Yes. 
I think they can big, do it. big time. Also, right now, in our Facebook group, I had posted the link where you can get free tickets through Ball Dogs. I'm not sure if those are still available or not as of right the second, but you can go on to uh, UNLV tickets and get tickets for one dollar up until midnight tonight you know kids and students are free but if you get it before midnight you can purchase one dollar tickets also the first twenty five hundred dollar or twenty five hundred fans will receive a pink lady rebel shirt that celebrates the play for k initiative which helps raise um awareness for cancer in women and breast cancer you got $2 Miller Lite beers for those that are 21 and over um, through halftime or while supplies last. And here's the kicker. If anybody knows a UNLV student out there, have them get down to this game because there'll be one lucky student that sits in sections 110 or 111. They will be receiving free tuition for an upcoming semester. The what? prize is going to, yeah, the prize is going to be hidden in one of the t-shirts that get tossed into the stands during the game. So. At some point during this game, there'll be uh, like a price for a free semester of tuition tucked into one of these T-shirts. Does that only qualify for undergrad or grad students too? I have no idea. It just said student, UNLV students. So you are, I think you need to be in the student section and probably be some kind of, whether it be undergrad or grad, but come on, that's a, that's a great thing right that's there. That's a great uh, marketing push for real. Yes. Really hey, Alicia. Is. Very nice perk. Exactly. Free tuition. Yes. Is a hell of a prize, Heather. I mean, even a semester, even, I mean, that's, listen, yeah. especially in these times right now, <laughs> it is well worth it. Well, well worth it. One last little personal plug for um, some Vegas sports. There is an international cheer comp cheer and dance competition happening at the orleans this weekend on i think it's like saturday through monday it's by jams one of my girlfriend's daughters who i love tatum is going to be performing and comp competing there with her team from oh, hawaii tatum. yeah little tay um so they actually had won one of their championships out there they'll be um performing and competing in the d1 division on sunday so i will be doing that to go catch her so shout out to all those that are in Vegas who will be at the Orleans and who have um, fam out there Always. that are competing. Them cheer competitions, listen. Cheer competitions would be lit. They're always all the, practice. the dance teams, the cheers. It's it's a great look. So I, I hope she look. wins. I hope that her squad um, pulls through and keeps going up the ranks and they get the big And trophy. the dedication that these young kids have for it too. I mean, it's just like every other sport out there. I, I actually it. asked, I asked her mom, I was like, Hey, does Tate want to come on the show for like five minutes today and talk about her perform about her coming to Vegas? And she goes, oh, she would have loved to, but today is like her last, her last practice of four hours before they get on a flight to come out here this four week. hour practice. Wow. Four well, hour practice. It right. It's time to bring it on. I know. Get it tight. Get it right. So I'm excited to see those girls. Uh, <laughs> I did want to talk a little bit about the Super Bowl because I I'm still trying to understand Fletcher Cox and what he was wearing in this uh, piece here. If you were watching his pregame interview, the actual real outfit he had on is that Sunday evening look, as you can see. But of course, the memes came with the church hats and it looks like he had a blouse. I mean, it looks like he looked like one of your aunties that was at church. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out he as a like stylist, Trump. as a stylist, Mo, please. He looks like who's auntie? I Somebody's auntie. Who's auntie you look like? You don't look like my auntie. Okay. I'm like, who's I mean, auntie? Would you have switched up the shirt at least as a stylist, Mo? I, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't, don't I, I can't even give an opinion. These guys are wearing Tom Brown with kilts <laughs> and skirts and shorts and skorts and hot summer guy jeans and tapered skinny jeans and all kinds of stuff. So I'm at the point now that everybody just got to do their own thing, you know? Um, I, I get it, it. It's a great, great, great capture of him to get those memes going. Um, it definitely, what you would think he was sitting on a whole bunch of peppermints to give out. Whole bunch of pass out <laughs> the Might little strawberry candy, you know what I mean? I don't know, but I'm like the caramel nips had a pocket of caramel nips ready to go. I don't oh, know, man. But I mean, everybody's fashion choices are different. I, I, yeah. I've stopped judging, I'm trying to be very good <laughs> with what people are doing. 
Look so at me trying, trying to lure trying, you in. I'm trying to lure you in to this to, one. <laughs> not trying to diss nobody anymore. People are wearing what they're wearing. I'm going with it, you know? Hey, no, it, you got to do your own individuality thing. If he was confident in it and he had the confidence for it, I love it. Go for it, bro. Hey, okay. Do your thing. All right. All right. Uh, it was really great to see Brittany Griner out at the show, uh, at the Super Bowl, supporting the Eagles. Her and her wife were there. I think this was like one of her first appearances out, um, out, out. So good look for her. Happy to yeah. see her out. Yeah, it was a good look. It was a good look. Um, you know, Juju Smith is big known for his TikToks and his dancing, but he went in, first of all, yesterday on Valentine's Day because we all know about the questionable hold call that was taking place at the end of the game um against him and they were going back and forth with the twitter you know him and uh aj brown it was james well, bradbury it's... but you know it was really it, it was really yeah. aj brown that went into it with him and then you had other people cj gardner going in i think even patrick mahomes topped it off at the end so hey I mean, he admitted Twitter to holding the guys. It's a very soft hold. They had other yeah. other holding calls he could have called, especially in the first half of the game. But, you know, it yeah. is what it is. Burgos. But, I mean, for that to be the last play, basically, of the game that controls yeah, I mean, who the winner is, it, it was a tough look. It was tough for Eagle was. fans, but it, um, was. it was a great Super Bowl. There would, hadn't what? been a whole lot of issues up until that point. Patrick Mahomes now is, like, the third quarterback that's won two NFL MVPs and two Super Bowl MVPs, the only other two, Brady and Montana. And that's yeah. the kind of names you want to be around in record books. So congrats to Patty. <laughs> Listen, th this is a little early for Mother's Day, but if you needed to have a mother's appreciation video, it's the Kelsey brothers. So you've got to watch this. It's like a minute long, but it really is so sweet. This is after... Um, the Chiefs and Kelsey and Travis had beat the Eagles and Jason, but these two brothers come together to share uh, a little emotional tribute for their mom. Moment I saw mom is when I got really emotional because, man, it was so awesome. It was... All right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was awesome for you know she was on top of the world for for a week. She was the heavyweight champ, man. <laughs> she was on top of it, and she shined the whole time, man. That was that was the coolest part. Mom, you absolutely killed it. Dad, you've been killing it. Yep. It was just so cool, man, to see, uh, you know, her get to celebrate in that with us. Yeah, I'm with you, brother. It was an awesome moment. <sighs> just so happy for her and so happy that, um, you know, she got her moment. Dad got his. So, yeah, I was the only, <laughs> ironically, you know, you, you lose the Super Bowl. <sighs> and you're you're crying after the game. And they're not tears of sadness. You know, they're tears of joy. Yeah, that just was cute. Just so sweet. I just, yeah. yeah. It was really good. I'm very sweet of them. Um, their mom definitely had a great week. She was riding that wave and was definitely a center of attention. The thing that the Eagles also lost, though, they lost both their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator the last couple of days. Uh, the offensive coordinator, I think is going to the Colts. The defensive mm -hmm. co coordinator is going to the Cardinals for their head coaching positions. So wow. this is the first time that a Super Bowl team has lost both, um, wow. of their offensive defensive coaches in the same end of season. So they had such a hell of a season. I can only imagine people were trying to go and gun after who they could get. Of course. After, yeah. After, yeah. That investment is interesting, but yeah. It, definitely That's interesting. And the Raider fans got their wish, I guess, the official release of Derek Carr. So what was I thought was interesting is when they were talking about it, apparently the Saints were the only team interested in a trade for him, but they wanted to give him a lot lower salary than I guess he wanted. So he decided no. And the only surprise you know, for that is Derek Carr. 
Huh? The only surprise for that is Derek Carr. <laughs> I don't. I doubt he was even surprised, was but yeah. <laughs> Ego on this guy. But they had to do it soon because they were about to be on the hook for about $40 million worth of salary for 2023 and 24. Well, yeah, we um, knew that he was going to get cut. He yeah. had a no trade clause, which was the right. dumbest thing that we could ever agree to with him. But we still got some <laughs> of the money. Uh, but the fact that he thought he was worth more than what they asked for over in Saintsville. Yeah, Hello? who knew what time it was? It's Derek Carr. So the ego on this guy. And now where are you going to shop? I mean, I'm more I'm more curious to see who are we going to get when it comes to the draft. Um, what yeah, because in our way, or even to get a vet, because you might need a vet out there. You really, you guys don't even have that on the squad. You're gonna need to pick I up mean, a couple. I mean, get a vet. Some, I would love a vet. You need some options, and then we go on. You know, but yeah. I don't know what that vet's gonna look like. And I don't want to jinx it, and I don't want to put any names out there. I'm just gonna sit and ride the wave of what the Raiders are trying to do, and. <laughs> Try to stay positive and hopefully it's an effective enough where we can franchise tag uh, Josh Jacobs and keep him there, have all our key offensive weapons, and then in draft time get a better defensive line, keep Max, keep who we have right there, but also, and Chandler Jones, he stepped up a little bit too, but try to draft better when this draft comes yeah. out, you know? But you guys are going to have a good amount of picks too. What did he think he was going to get a Super Bowl, a Super Max <laughs> deal contract? Like, yeah, right. Bruce can't help you. <laughs> You're we just saw how you perform with one of the top wide receivers in the league, and you can't do that. So, <laughs> come on. I don't they know. offered him less money. Oh, are you surprised? Come on. Uh, yeah. Not surprised at all. Up. Especially if you grab somebody that's top notch. I do want to give a shout out to Geno Smith, though. He won the NFL Honors Comeback Player of the Year. The fact that he won over Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley is pretty impressive. So I was uh, overjoyed for that one. So I'm happy about that. And we'll see what this leads to for Seattle. I guess our quarterback coach also just got picked up somewhere else. So we'll be finding a new one of those this season. Mm. Um, yeah, it should be mm. interesting. But hey, it is what it is. Right. That is how it goes. So let's get to the fun, Mo. I know your Dodgers are coming back. My Mariners are trying to actually push it through more than a couple games in the playoffs. We're trying to get to a second round. We're trying to get out of the wild card playoff. But interesting that I saw this. I couldn't believe it. They're increasing the size of the bases by Good. two inches. Good. <laughs> Good. So they're going to go from, I'm sorry, by three inches. They're going to go from 15 inches around. Uh, 15 inches length and width um, by to now 18 inches. Um, the Red Sox manager, Alex Cora said they look like a pizza box. So the meme here is uh, Jose Altuve standing on the new, <laughs> on the new base. Yeah, because these guys will make it to that baseline and still get tagged. And then they don't even see it. Their foot is on the doggone bag. So make it three inches wide. Yes. Good. Well, we they say that it also helpfully help them. They touch the base. Well, it also helped, they said, to prevent some injuries, like people aren't going to be running over feet. Uh, but it also decreases the, the length between the bases. So you'll be now the, the path between bases will be shortened by four inches. So we could see more base stealing this season, possibly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that four inches is, a, is that second sometimes that's needed when you're out. Um, it'll be interesting. Pitch clock also will be used. We'll have 15 seconds for no runners, 20 seconds with runners. Spring training has officially began. Um, players and catchers reported uh, to Arizona or Florida this week. Some started today and the rest will be there by Friday. Position players report on Monday and Tuesday next week. The interesting thing about spring training this year is that there's the World Baseball Classic, which runs from the 7th of March to the 21st of March. So a lot of these players are in the World Classic and won't be with their teams until they finish those games. And then opening day is the 30th. So a lot of these players that are in the World Baseball Classic won't be having that time to train with their teammates, but only a few days before the actual spring training opening day. So... Should be interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love it, Heather. <laughs> the only time yeah. people will say four inches is a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, yeah, in baseball, I guess it matters, right? 
going to matter a whole lot. Like I said, it's going to gonna matter a whole lot. And yeah. just a reminder for everybody here, all-star major league baseball game is in Seattle this summer, what? June 11th at T-Mobile park. What? Circle the date. Uh, whoever wants to have a, a group outing to Seattle, let me know. Cause that's, I think I'm going to be trying to get to that game for sure. All right. Mm-hmm. What? I remember I was, there was the last all-star game they had for me. Baseball there was, I think it was like 2000 or 2001. That's good. I never, made, I never made it to the game, but I had a lot of fun. <laughs> That's weather though. For you Great guys. weather. Yeah. It'll be the perfect time. I mean, it's so, be, it could be actually a little hot, but it'll be a good time out there. The sun will be out. You'll probably be able to catch some boats and get on the water while you're out there. It's an amazing time to, to get there for Seattle. So yeah, good deal there. Um, we're going to get into some sneaker drops there are a handful this time there's some stuff coming out so we've got uh the nike dunk low just do it these are the phantoms i couldn't quite see what that little charm was on the laces but these will be out tomorrow on the 16th for all the new balance fans out there the stone island um collab with the new balance 574 these will be on the 16th a nice little suede and some stone and gray colorways I think we might have seen these before in men's, but these are the women's uh, Jordan 1 OG reverse lanely. These will be out on the 17th for Warriors fans, maybe some old school throwback Seattle Mariners fans, I don't know. Uh, ugly. UCLA fans, huh? They're ugly. I kind of like them just for the throwback of the Mariners colors, but that I think yellow the Mariners. And that blue is very jarring. And I don't <laughs> even know how you can wear those. Like, seriously. No, if you're uh, Bruin, maybe if you're UCLA, that could be a UCLA fandom maybe. right there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They're ugly, though. Okay. Those are not tracking. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Jordan 1 mid. These are and the they kicks. Tracking because they're, these are... mid, they're not tracking. If they and had these... that a one high top, I'd probably be around it for the New York Knicks or whatever. But the fact right. that that's a mid is insulting. Why would well, they are making. I don't know, but they're also called the Wheaties. And actually, I did purchase one of these T-shirts today because they're bringing back some of the old school Jordan Wheaties box tops. So you've got the those are pretty Jordan. fire, but the shoes yeah. are not. The fact that yeah. they're mids is just out of line. You know, I don't know why. I know, I know I think that that is a good shoe to track. The mids are just not it. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> they could have made that a so one or a one low. That could have been the firest shoe if it was just a regular J. To do that as a mid, I'm just like, ugh, I have to side eye. I'm sorry. Maybe they're going to come out with an o uh, with a high as well. I don't know. But speaking of air, uh, did everybody catch the commercial break during a uh, Super Bowl for the air Legend of the Court um, movie that's coming out? I'm excited for oh, that. Oh, yeah. That should be pretty good. It's going to be good. Yeah, it'll be good. So the pennies, the penny twos, um, the black patent and the rosewood, in case you're, you know, 90s inspired, <laughs> um, what you can catch those? the, <laughs> you can catch these on the what? 17th. <laughs> what are those? I'm sorry. What are we doing right now? Like, this you know, because they want, they bring in the, they're bringing the shacks back. They're bringing the pennies back. They're bringing, you know, the pick. They're running I out of mean, concept and ideas is what it sounds like to me. So somebody at Nike needs to get better stuff going get it out. Together. This is not, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Who is in charge right now? <laughs> we need some better. We uh, don't know. We don't. To come in and do a reshuffle. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of, you know. Oh my God! Are you uh -oh. serious? Are you serious? Uh, right now? I know it's not for these shoes. This, <laughs> this no, is I'm the... saying that for these shoes. I am saying oh. that for these shoes. Are you the serious? Nike Dunk Low Electric Algae? These will be out in the seventeen. What in the French toast are those? <laughs> you don't like all the bright colors? No, no. <laughs> what are we doing out here in these streets? I would be fine if it was like the the blue the, like the blues and the greens. I, I don't know why this yellow got it. in there. Why are we <sighs> doing these? And looking at it from my iPad, they look cheap as hell. The quality of them and that blue. Oh my God! Why? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Chris. Wynn. he is they also are, not honestly, feeling those, I think drops are getting 
they're getting ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry, but all they're doing is recycling a lot of old colorways. They're reaching back into the crates and then they're I... thinking they're creative and they think they're genius by throwing these crazy other ways going through with it. I'm not no. feeling none of these. This shit is okay. wild. Oh, excuse my language. It's bad. <laughs> and then you uh, the Nike blazers for what? They the Nike blazer oh. mids, summer uh, white. Not... Those will be out on the 18th. Now, this here's a pair that are... This is what we're spending our money on. Okay. Yeah. Well, now here's some for the golfers out there. Okay. You got the six lows coming out in for red. That's pretty they dope. Fly. I'm so cool. This will be out on the 21st. And last but not least, you've got Jeremy Scott with an Adidas collab for the Forum Wings 4.0. I've seen those the before. Pack. This is nothing new. Well, you've seen the wings, but I don't think they were like the patent leather and the... Um... No, trust me. We've seen these before. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. He even made them where they're a little more puffed out. Yeah, we've seen these before. Ugh. I'm telling you, these concepts are not anything new. Like, you're really on some recyclable stuff right now. And then you want us to pay all this extra amount of money for them? No. No, thank you. And the quality's not the same. I need them to stop it right now. Moni's a direct ridiculous. line. Direct it's line ridiculous. to... Yeah. Hopefully Except they can come up with like, something like, new. You mean to tell me you're going to put out a blazer like that and it doesn't even have a 3M sole? Nothing to attract the consumer? Just a plain old neutral blazer high top a little bit of exposed foam up the tongue. It's a mid too. And I'm gonna say oh I, I only want blazers that are lows. Period. High like I can't lows. And then one thing I can't stand about the blazers like, is all the laces. Oh like they have God. the amount of laces on there is just and I then can't. you think we're crazy because we're gonna buy the mid. Oh my goodness. Somebody out there is buying them. That's for sure. You know there's people out there buying them. Well, I know the people that are buying them, and they whack too. So it's just crazy. <laughs> like I, I just, it's just, it's gone. This, this hype beast, this whole movement is just done. Oh man, you guys, they, they're doing too doggone much. It's not even, it's not even chic. I'm sorry. None of these tracks that you just showed me on the drop. I hate, I, and I know it's not you, but I hate that these are even a thing. I know. Considered a purchase, they out of line, and, and these were the best of the ones that I could find because the other ones that were coming out too was just like <sighs> I'd rather you show all the fours that are dropping this month as opposed to what I see right here. My well, goodness. we, I you know, I only go week by week, so if there's fours dropping later in the month, we'll, we'll deal with those next week. But there was nothing dropping in this next week that was a four, and that's for sure. Yeah, it, it's that's not, crazy, it, that is so insane to me. Uh, yeah, um. Looks like uh, Joel uh, Joel Embiid or Joel Embiid, Embiid. He's not. Uh, he's unsure about the All Star game on Sunday. Why? So he may also be out. It says that the doctors recommend a rest for foot injury. I mean, if that you got a rest, rest for the All Star. I mean, it's just a scrimmage. Yeah, it's not a big deal. But it you is. know, some people no. come there just gotta, to see certain play players play. play. You know? Yeah. You in that yeah. Corner. And I. Um, I do too, uh, Heather. Yeah, like I get mm -hmm. it, but at the same time, I mean, none of this is really like uh, I don't know. The hype beast thing is, I think, is fading. In my opinion, I think it's time we we start really considering what is chic in the sneaker culture because now they're just throwing stuff out there because it's trendy and cool. So they're just gonna throw anything without the care of those that used to be really good sneaker heads and could curate looks. Now they're just throwing anything out there. For what? Uh oh, Jonathan has a panda. The panda ones. Oh yeah, the of panda course, ones did drop. Everybody has the panda. That's probably the most. Well, amazing. no, those are the dunks. Remember, they also Jordan dropped panda ones too. I don't care. They're pandas. You you. Well, because you, now the panda is selling. The panda is selling and everything. This is this is you what know? I'm talking about. You yeah. think that this is this is the dope move to just keep dropping pandas like it's okay? Like this is what we do because the the panda dunks will be on like their tenth release, I think. And they don't week. go with everything. Let's be clear: people are wearing pandas out there, ain't even they got a style with them. Like they're, they're it's crazy. They don't even go with everything. Like you don't even know what to put with those stupid shoes. But some people don't even style to have their sneakers match or go with anything to begin with. <laughs> and that's a problem. And that's a big problem. And I said I wasn't going to be judging on people's styles and looks, but when it comes to the sneaker thing, they're, 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 they
And that's why I have not participated because it's not even like maybe we need sneaker. to have Mo's codes for sneaker styling on. I mean, episode. I've just been doing this since the eighties or 90s. no. I'm just I saying mean, like, that would be. I think that would be entertaining for us and for listeners to have like you know Mo's give us the top five codes for styling sneakers from Mo. I think you know. Yeah, and it definitely don't involve skinny jeans or joggers. That's number one. <laughs> And like and the joggers. other thing too and is like pants. they just gonna throw you keep they just gonna keep throwing these pandas out here like we just crazy with it like that's because people like, keep buying the them people are on their second and third pair yeah because they recycle them like K Swiss I mean it might as well be the White Air Force ones you don't want to get them too dirty but they're Chris says your your Chris says your finger wave is strong <laughs> she, the McTumbo over here <laughs> yeah I do I wave that finger I'm like no 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm looking at everybody sideways with pandas. No offense, but I'm looking at you sideways. The pandas are done. Let's move on. That's all there's good. Other, I, I'm sure there's I still other got my pair, but I had like one of the original I don't drops. Even own so a I'm pair. just going to that's, that's how out of it I was. <laughs> I don't even own a pair. Like I wouldn't even submit to the shenanigans of a panda. Like I, that's beneath me. I'm sorry. I Call me bougie on the sneaker game. Whatever. Welcome to I'm Mo's there. Panda Rant. But the pandas are not it. Like stop it. And then they throw them out there because that's the Just one. Start tagging Mo like on some panda on some panda posts. <laughs> uh, them ain't tracking. TikTok kids will tell you that all day too. What well, I, I don't listen like. to kids. Forty-seven with some pandas. And <laughs> that's my shoe. Yeah. Okay. I'll stick to uh, my <laughs> some pandas. I just like, like bringing it up like sometimes because you got a whole good rant. I on did. The pandas. pandas are the worst. I don't know. I, just, I, just I mean, I love my pair. I'm not gonna go buy two, three pairs. I'm not gonna buy any more pandas. Like I, I got the one that I, I got them. I got I them mean, back when they first came out. I mean, it's a shame you the one, Melissa. To be quite honest with you, it's a shame like, you compared, got it's it. Not like but it's the only it's sneakers like, I got. It, 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 like you know me, I got a whole collection of shoes. Period. So I do like my pandas. I like it when I got some black and white gear on. I Listen, just, that's it. we were in 2020 pandas. with those pandas. It's 2023. Let's move on. We got another. <laughs> we gotta have something else. There's gotta be something else better. But it clearly there isn't because Nike. Is but there is. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. We got to we got to move on. We got to you keep those case with rolling and them British Knights and all that other stuff you got as pants. Oh, no. Keep that rolling but no. John, I feel you. I like joggers. I'm a yoga pant person. Uh I Done. still wear fairly Done. tailored tapered jeans, I guess. Nah, so that's out. Yeah. Skinny jeans is out. We're about to retrofit. Hype beast is out. I am just they telling you like, like a mofo. I'm yeah. just telling you what's on right. the street. But we're old, so old people wear old things. I get it, but I'm I try to stay current. I like mine. That's all it is. I mean, I got skinny jeans too because I haven't bought any new jeans, but I'm definitely <laughs> gonna get some wide legs. And I ain't legs. wearing no more bell bottom bootleg. Listen, those jeans I hated back when they came out with my grunge wear, my flannel shirts, Doc Martens. I I'm never wearing those jeans again. Uh, again. I hey, no. I get it. Flares aren't for everybody, but straight legs are. They are are not for me. You can have a straight leg. A straight leg leg is, yeah. I just also have a whole bunch of different options. I prefer a tapered leg, if anything. I don't. I don't need all the. And I'm more speaking to the men out there with the skinny and all of that. Yeah, please. We don't need to see what's in your pocket. We don't need to see you barely suffocating. Thinking they're fly with a pair of panda dunks, and you look silly. And you don't Here think you look silly. And that's and that's the cold part about it. Then you try to fool me by wearing mids over some straight legs, thinking they're high tops. And then when you raise, when you sit down, it's a mid shoe. You ain't even in a Jordan look high. Like, come on, man. Who did this? Who started? Who, gonna have, who messed gonna have this sni- up? For, <laughs> who messed this up for the culture? Like, I, I just have so many people that I could blame right now. It's messed up. They, they totally messed it up. <laughs> you totally ruined everything of all affects of what style meant with with sneakers. <laughs> most totally most sneaker rant. We this happens usually about every one to two or three sneaker. Well, I got drop triggered by episodes. the panda thing. Panda thing. I know you do. I know like you the do. fact that I know you do. It happens. Like, oh, the dumb it panda. Happens. No. <laughs> Why? I know. Well, not Garcia all of us are a, not all of us are the, in the style game like you. You know, they're not. In the, they're, it's not even about style. It's about your personality, individuality. Everybody is a carbon copy of copying something that's not cool. And I'm trying to tell you, go off of your own personality and make it. Your I own, do. But you all I'm look a like yoga pan, love the dog fan. 
You look like cookie cutters with the pandas on. You look like cookie cutters with any of these stupid oh, jays on. Jonathan, yeah. please don't ask Jonathan, the question. We'll be on here for six more minutes if that's the no, case. No, we're not. Well, I'll wrap it up. <laughs> Where you stand on mid. Did you miss the yeah, earlier crack position, crack Jonathan? Crack Jonathan because Mo hates mids more than pandas, probably. Hates what? <laughs> oh, I do yeah. hate mids. <laughs> But I hate I hate I hate pandas equally. But it's just like being in a track home. You're in the same home. If you, you, were, the same if you guy, had you to pick pandas. one That's shoe, if you had to pick one shoe to survive, and it was a mid or a panda. Which shoe would would you pick? I wouldn't pick neither. I go barefoot. You'd be done. Houses. What if you had to pick one? I couldn't. You had I'm to sorry. gun to your head. You had one. Pick one. I don't know. They just have to kill me at this point because I'm not going to be seen like that. I'm sorry. I, she went out like a G. She's not about to pick between them. <laughs> Mo went and out a, and a, <laughs> like a G. Here lies Mo. She went out like a G. She could not pick either the mids or the blandas. I can't. I can't and I End won't. I won't even admit to some stuff like that. That's crazy. <laughs> these are the people. See, these are the people. I just let me stop. <laughs> This is this is part of the problem now. I think that's hey, why we are going to end this show with a special girl power yes. for Don Staley. First of all, Don Staley is a huge Eagles fan. She was repping the Randall Cunningham jersey for her game on Super Bowl Sunday, where her Gamecocks took on LSU. The one in I think they were tied, undefeated for first in the uh, in the SEC women's basketball division. Listen, Gamecocks put a beat down LSU, 88-64. They're now 12-0 and in the conference, 25-0 in the season. Last season, they only lost one game. So they've got, I think, four games left this season to see if they can stay undefeated. Uh, the fans were lined up two hours before the game started. Two hours for women's yeah. basketball. That's what I'm talking about. That was one of the one. most anticipated women's basketball yeah. On Super Bowl Sunday, I know I watched that game. That was I woke That's up that amazing. morning for that game, for this game primarily. I said, "This is going to yeah. be the girls' basketball Super Bowl. We got to see it." And they're going to see some of those faces in the WNBA next year. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a great game until they just mm -hmm. South Carolina just ran with it. I was like, "See, yeah, they're a problem." Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's the show for today, Heather. Thank you. I'm glad we can entertain people out there. If you're just catching you. the tail end of this. Make sure to uh, go to YouTube slash Girl Chat Sports. Subscribe to our YouTube. Check out the videos there. You can also hang tight. Watch the replay here on Facebook and or Twitter if you're watching that way. And hey, excuse me. We will be back next week. We hope everyone has a safe weekend. Enjoy the All-Stars. Enjoy the sports that's happening everywhere. And uh, yeah, catch you next week, y'all. Have a good one. Be safe. Yeah, we're out. Be safe. <laughs> Bye. For black colleges, you guys.